Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Phil Miller, the GIS Services Program Manager at the New Mexico Bureau of Geology and Mineral Resources. Today I wanted to present on a topic that seems to come up fairly often, but not terribly often enough that I think it's described in enough detail. And I think this video will provide a quick service for many users who are obtaining data built from a uh, Esri software package and wanting to use QGIS or a free open source GIS program in order to view some of our data. So most commonly we have found that making an Esri map package is one of the more convenient ways for getting all of the data together, all of the fonts that you'll need, uh, the PDF of the layout and the PDF of the report together in one complete package that everyone can download. One of the things that we've learned over the years is that most people that don't have Esri softwares also don't know how to use our map packages in a way that helps them collect the information to the best of their need. And one of the things that I've discovered over the years is that a simple discussion of what a map package is will greatly help users of free open source GIS software. So at the core of it, this video will be a discussion and demonstration of how to extract a map package and also how to then load a geodatabase into many free open source softwares. One of the misconceptions is that a geodatabase is a proprietary software or proprietary file format and it's actually not. It is used in many GIS softwares and is capable of being read in much like shapefiles are. The caveat is the confusion comes from our map packages. So I kind of want to clear up the information on this. What I've done is I've downloaded the US, the, the uh, New Mexico State Geologic Map from the geoinfo.nmt.edu website. That is the New Mexico Bureau of Geology's website. When I downloaded it, I get the map package. And at the core of it, what really this map package is, is a zip file. It's just a compressed file that collects all of the data, layer settings, and uh, map layout settings in an MXD, as well as all of the additional files like PDFs and the font zip file, the, the fonts that are used for the FGDC uh, 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 symbology. And what we've discovered is that this confusion really locks a lot of people up and we want to clear the air on this and show you how easy these are to actually work with. So one of the things that commonly happens is that when working with a map package, if you double click on it, it extracts it to a location of your not specifying. I refer to this uh, lovingly as La La Land. If I double click on this, it'll extract it to La La Land. La La Land is on your C drive. It's in your user profile in the ArcGIS folder. And many people then don't know how to deal with this. And when they're editing it, they don't know where their edits are actually taking place. So one of the things that I recommend doing anytime you get a map package from an agency is you make a folder location for that map package to live. And then because this is just a compressed file uh, folder of a whole bunch of files, you can extract it into that folder location and then you know where the data lives. So I made my folder on a local hard drive in a 500k folder. So this represents a one to 500,000 scale map. And I made a folder that's called the New Mexico State Geologic Map. If you have a software like 7-Zip or many of the other unzipping softwares, what you'll want to do is right click on the map package and choose 7-Zip or Extract. Uh, there's many different softwares that you can use to open zip files. And what I'm going to do is say Extract here. Now, I use the 7-Zip software. It's a shareware free uh unzipping and zipping package. It is very robust and is downloadable from the web. Uh, make sure you get it from an official source though. So if I click on 7-Zip and click extract here, what this does is unpack the map package into its individual components. So we can start to see that it extracts the folders into their visible uh, 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 organization. So we've got a common data, we've got an Esri info folder, currently we have a V10 folder, and here shortly we'll end up with a V10.8 folder. 
what these represent is this is a version that is compatible in ARC Esri GIS's uh, 10.0. And this would be a compatible version in 10.8. This also lets you know which uh, Esri package, which release this was built in. So we can see that since there's a V10.8, this was built in 10.8. If you are still working on 10.4, 5, 6, or 7, you would want to open the V10 version. But what ultimately is in each of these uh, folders is a duplicate bit of information. Again, one that's compatible with version 10 and one that's compatible with version 10.8. So if I open up the V10 folder, we can see that our geo database now is right here. And we can access this and add this data into QGIS very easily. So the M MXD in this version is compatible only with version 10 for this MXD. And in this folder, we see all of the same information, but this MXD is compatible with version 10.8. So at the core of it, you end up with duplicates right in the geo database. And this is a problem for many people because it is an unorganized way of uh, collecting data. Because sometime you may grab this one, and other times you may grab this geo database and not know exactly which one you're working in. So if you know what version of the software you're going to be working in, my recommendation is to, you know, if you're working in something before 10.8, you would want to open this one and delete the version 10.8. If you will be working in version 10.8, I would delete the version 10 because these are duplicate data. Again, there's the same exact information in here in each of these, except the exception is that this MXD is compatible with version 10. And this MXD is compatible with version 10.8. Now, since we're trying to use this in a free open source GIS, it doesn't matter which one you want, because which one you use, because you're not going to worry about the MXD. You want the geo database that contains the feature classes that contains the data that you want. So what I'm going to do right off the bat is I'm going to go ahead and delete one of these folders so that there is no confusion on which version I am working in. And then I can go ahead and open up my QGIS software, and I can start working with the data. So ultimately, this is our geodatabase of the geologic map for the state of New Mexico. We want to add this data into our QGIS environment so that we can work with the data as we need. So here's QGIS, and here's the part that's nice now. Much like your shape files that you would download from a website, you can navigate to where you downloaded that to. In this case, we downloaded it to D, 500K, State Geologic Map, and here's that V10 folder, and here is the geodatabase. So if I click on that and expand it, we can now see each of the feature classes that are in here. So we've got area feature classes, point feature classes, and line feature classes. So for our state geologic map, if we add in the contacts and faults, this will represent the boundaries of our lithologies, as does the map unit lines, which tends to represent uh, dikes instead of contacts and faults. So these are the two feature classes that are used to make the map unit polys feature class. And if I add that in, we can see now that we have polygons, we have contacts and faults, and we have map unit lines, each displayed as we need to. And from here now, you can symbolize this data as you need, much like you did with your shape files that you download, but now they're contained in a geo database. So as you can see, this is not proprietary. In terms of being unusable in QGIS, um, but it is a semi-proprietary uh, file format, but you can still access and use data even if it's in a map package. All you need to do is unzip it and then get access to the individual geodatabases inside of that map package. And then you can go ahead and symbolize as you would any feature class using categories, based off of a feature, classify, and now we have each of our uh, uh, 
geologic map units described here, and we can assign colors to these to be able to start using our data. So I wanted to go ahead and give you that heads up. I hope this video has been informative on how to use and extract a map package and be able to access the geodatabase data or any of the feature class shapefile data that exists inside of a map package. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Thank you very much. I hope this video has been helpful.